Hello guys, uh, this particular video is going to be one of the most important videos of the course. Uh, here you will learn about uh, using forms in PHP. So if you remember, we created HTML forms back in our course, but we never submitted them to our server. So in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to create a small application, which will be a login application where the user will be greeted with a login form having two input fields. The first would be username and the second would be password. So once the user submits the form, the data that is the username and the password entered by the user will be sent to a PHP file and that PHP file uh, would have two arrays. One will be the username array and the second would be a password array. So if the username entered by the user matches with any of the values in the username array and not or and the password matches from one entry in the passwords array then we'll say welcome user otherwise we'll say incorrect username password so this is what we are going to do okay so for this what we are going to do is uh, we are going to create a html form first of all and then we are going to create a php file that will handle the response at the server okay okay let's start then so we are back to sublime text so before uh, doing anything let's create a HTML file let's save it as login underscore form dot PHP okay uh, one more thing although it's a HTML file I have saved it as a PHP file the reason is uh, because we are going to do it anyways for all the files that we are going to uh, create in the future we are going to name them as PHP even though we are not using them as PHP just remember this as a rule of thumb even if it's an HTML file you have to save it like a PHP file okay let's start with the HTML tags now um, we'll start with the head tag which will have a title tag which will say login form then it will have a body tag which will have a h3 which will say login here and then we will have our form okay so now in our form we will have two input fields the first one would be a username so the type is text and we will have a br we will have a label which will say enter username it will have a br like this then we'll have one more label which will say enter password we'll have a br then we'll have small b one more input this time it will be submit and the value would be equal to login that's it okay so let's first save this and let's reload this file into our browser by hitting localhost slash php demo and the file name is login underscore form dot php and as you can see oh, oh uh, I'm really sorry what you have to do is you have to also create a password field like this password and you have to put a br and save now reload and this is how it looks it has got some pre-filled data because my browser is filling it in but most likely you'll be getting a blank space like this we can do one more br over here like this save and reload okay so this is how your form should look okay now uh, what we are planning to do is that once a user enters a username and some password and when he enters or presses the login button what should happen is he should be redirected to a second page a completely new page where he will be uh, greeted with either a welcome user or incorrect username or password so uh, the whole thing works like this 
this particular file will serve as the front end of the application that the user will be interacting with once he will click on login the data that is over here will be taken to the server onto a different php file and all the processing would be done there okay so what you have to do is before doing this uh, we have to learn two three new things in this particular video the first thing is <clears throat> in the form tag you have to add an attribute called action so what is action so action is basically uh, this attribute inside where you provide the name of the file that will handle the response on the server so basically what i'm trying to say is when he will click say, uh, login this data and this data will be sent to this file on the server this is what it means okay you have to remember this next is we have to add one more attribute and that is called method and we have to set the value as post so what it means is how this data will be sent to the server so there are two three ways using which you send data to a server the first one is using url you must have seen uh, like let me open google.com and uh, let me search for say online training and you have to focus over here this place and now if you can see in the url q is equal to online plus training can you see this term this basically means whatever we typed in the previous page of google this means whatever you have typed in the previous page of the google is actually sent to the server of google using the url so this way of sending data is called get but since in our application we are going to send a password so it's not at all desirable to send the passwords using a an url so what we do is we hide the password and we don't send it using the url and that way of sending data is called post okay so up until now we have learned two new things first what is action action is basically you have to specify the path of the file that's present on the server which will receive the data from the form and process on it and the second is how the data will be traveling to the server either get or post by default it's get but if you mention it explicitly it will be post okay now we have to learn one last thing and that is what is name attribute so always remember this whenever you are sending any data to the server you have to first give it a name okay so basically what i'm trying to say is at the server uh, the file that will receive the data which is login underscore validation dot php this file should know under what name the data is coming so suppose the user sent his username so suppose his username is xyz so that particular xyz will be wrapped inside a variable name that is username or it can be anything even this can be a variable name but for code readability purpose we are writing username so under username uh, the username of the user is sent okay so why is it necessary the thing uh, this is necessary because suppose you have five different post variables you want to send five different set of data to the server it may be name email uh, college name branch name okay so now at the server when this file receives all the five data how would it know what is the purpose of a particular data how would it know that a name is supposed to be a name that's why what you do is you kind of provide a tag with the data okay so you just you're just saying the data coming from this input field is username so when the uh, file will receive it it will automatically know okay so this is the username similarly the data coming from this input field will be treated as password okay so that is why we have to provide a name okay so we have learned three things first action the name of the file which will do all the processing method in what manner we are sending the data and name name is basically tagging your data okay so now that we have learned all these things uh, we are good to go to the backend to create our backend logic so let's go and create our backend logic for that we are going to create a completely new file and we are going to save it as login underscore validation dot php so you have to just make sure the name that you have uh, given to the new file should be exactly similar to the name that you have provided to your html file 
okay now this is the file which will handle the response so let's create a php tag like this and now as i said first we will receive username then we will receive the password and then we will check if the user name and not or password are present in the array on the server so let's first create the arrays so these arrays are basically a general representation uh, of a database the things that you're going to do here would be done using databases in a few videos so let's create first a username array again this is totally on us so we are going to create an array uh, the usernames are rahul ankit rajiv shivam so the data that has been sent from the user should be one of these and similarly we are going to create a password array is equal to array and let's set some passwords a b a b c d uh, some random stuff and some more random stuff <clears throat> so these are the two arrays you have to just make sure the data that we are receiving from the html file is uh, is one of these okay so that is our core logic so now comes the important part where we are going to receive uh, the data entered by the user into a php variable over here so uh, let's create the name of the let's uh, keep the name of the variable as html username and over here we have to receive the data that is being sent from the user from this file you by this particular input field so this is how we do it dollar underscore post and inside here you have to provide the tag the name that was sent from there which is this okay so we'll write username like this similarly we can also receive the password so the password name is html underscore password is equal to dollar underscore post and over here we'll provide the same name as it was sent from there so it would be password like this got it and now comes the most important part that we have to check that whether or not this particular thing exists among these and this particular thing exists among these if the condition is true we'll print out welcome user if not we'll print out incorrect username password okay save so now i'll just write this simple simple uh, if condition if dollar HTML username. Uh, in fact, what we can do is we can use a PHP function called in array. And in array is basically this function. If you provide two arguments to this, that is first uh, the thing that you are searching for, and second the array name. So it will give one or zero depending on if it exists or not. So here needle would be dollar html username and the haystack would be dollar username array so basically if the name coming from the user is present in this array this whole thing will return one and similarly we'll write and in array this time the needle would be html password and the haystack would be dollar password array so now if both these are one then only the whole thing would be one and the condition will be satisfied and it will be printed as welcome user else it will be echoed out as incorrect username and password okay simple logic right so let's save and check how does it work 
So now this is our form. We are reloading it. We are removing this question mark. Reload again. I am removing this data like this. I am entering a username, say Shivam, and I am entering a password, uh, say one two three four five. One two three four five. Okay. So now ideally, when I press login, the uh, response should be welcome user, and it says welcome user. So our logic is working. Let's go back. and uh, let's keep shivam over here but let's keep some random long password which we know is not present in the array so now if we click on login it says incorrect username and login uh, username and password so this is how you actually create a login form or registration form okay so let's go back and uh, check a few more things like what will happen if i do this suppose the user hasn't entered any username and password and he directly clicks on login now you know this shouldn't be there because this is not the correct response you should ideally handle the response yourselves so basically what it means is if he hasn't entered anything and if he presses and uh, login the answer should be please fill both the fields okay so what you do is for that <coughs> you actually check if dollar not empty dollar HTML username and not empty dollar HTML password and inside over here this is basically a function which checks that whatever is inside here is not empty so if the data sent by the input field of username is not empty and the data sent from the password field is not empty it means both the data is filled then only will apply this whole logic so i'm just cutting it down control x and i'm pasting it inside over here uh just tab and we have got the indentation if the condition is false which is any one of them or both of them are empty then in that case we'll print out you have to print or rather you have to provide both the values this is what we are going to display so let's save it let's go back and reload and now what we are doing is we are removing this and also this and now if i submit it says you have to provide both the values in fact if you omit only one of them even then the message would be you have to provide both the values so this is a much more correct way of doing stuffs okay so uh, this is how you handle a uh, basic uh, post application